you've got questions, we've got answers, and we have the man to answer them. Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham Wealth Strategies. Jeffrey, I've got a boatload of questions for us to answer to this morning. Awesome. Looking forward to it. All right. So the first one goes like this. Um, when should I first buy life insurance? So I think this is an interesting question. I would actually break it into to two different parts. There is the, what is the pressing need that has just occurred in my life? So this could be something along the lines of, I just bought a house and I want to make sure that if something happens to me, the mortgage can be paid off. Or I just had a child and I want to make sure that if something happens to me, that child will be taken care of, can go to college, et cetera. Those are the types of kind of reactionary times where I believe it makes sense to purchase life insurance, or at the very least, to reevaluate the need based on the current amount of life insurance you have. So every time you have one of those major events where future income becomes more necessary or you increase the amount of debt you have, for instance, it logically makes sense to reevaluate that life insurance need. However, it's also worth noting that for some people, especially today, you know, people are getting married later, they're buying houses potentially later. And obviously, as you get older, your health can sometimes decline or new things can occur. So if you are, if you're confident that this is going to be part of your future, you could look to secure life insurance, perhaps while you're younger, even before those needs arise, simply to make sure that you have the guaranteed insurability that you do while you're healthy, you know, while you're healthy and young is the most affordable time to buy life insurance. Oftentimes we wait because we don't need it, but that could mean if all of a sudden you discover you have some sort of medical condition uh, that could increase the cost or potentially prevent you from getting it altogether at a later point when you would otherwise need it. So I think those are the two ways I would look to say when you should buy life insurance. One is I'm young, I'm looking to do these things in the future, I can afford it. And so I will make this move now to guarantee myself the ability to have insurance for the foreseeable future. The second is in reaction to a event in your lifetime that increases the need for insurance if you were to die. Again, common situations here would be births, marriages, increases of debt, usually due to the purchase of a house. All right, two quick follow-ups. One is any preference, uh, term versus uh, cash value whole life. And then secondly, how much? Rule of thumb is what, seven times income or would you prefer someone do a needs analysis? So I definitely would prefer someone does a needs analysis. I'm not a big fan of rules of thumb, but look, if you're younger, it's probably going to be more than seven times your, your, your average income because your income may be still increasing over the next 10 or 15 years, not just by cost of living adjustments, but as you move up in the workforce, you take higher paying jobs. Uh, I personally, I've always found that I want more insurance. Every time I, I have insurance, I always end up wanting more because as someone with a wife and three children, I'm always concerned, like, what if something happens to me? I want to make sure that they maintain the, the same style of life that they've become accustomed to today. And, you know, that's not a requirement. That's a personal choice. And so that's one of the reasons I'm not a big fan of needs analysis. Some families may say, look, we'd rather spend less. And if the off chance that something happens to you or, or you, we'll just, you know, we'll move out of the house and we'll downsize. And, and all those things are fine personal choices for me. I, I look, I say, if God forbid something happens to me, there's going to be enough upheaval as it is. And obviously it would be a horrible situation. I would, at least I'd hope so uh, for my, for my children and my wife, et cetera. I want to have a little change as possible for them uh, beyond that, at least for the, for the foreseeable few years after such an event. So I am, I am a fan of doing the needs analysis and, and sometimes even going further, the wants analysis, right? What, what do you want? Um, and then as far as your other question, cash value or term, I think that is uh, apropos. It's kind of a question of would I rather have a hammer or a screwdriver? Uh, and the answer is, well, tell me what I'm doing, right? Am I hitting a nail into the, uh, you know, into the piece of wood? Or am I trying to screw a screw? Because it will significantly determine which of those two tools I choose to use. And so when it comes to protection life insurance, I'm generally a big fan of term insurance because you can afford so much more of it for so much less. Uh, and you can guarantee it for you know typically periods of five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Uh, and so for protection purposes, I believe term insurance is probably the best way to go for most people. Now, there's certainly a place for permanent life insurance, such as whole life. And if you need protection life insurance, 
but you want to have permanent insurance for, let's say, some other reasons, such as building a cash reserve, et cetera, you can lower the amount of term you have by the amount of cash value, whole life, or something along those lines, the death benefit associated with those policies. But I would not turn to them as my first choice in most instances if I'm simply looking to mitigate against the pure risk of death. Because for that, the best bang for your buck is almost always going to be with a fixed term insurance policy that's guaranteed for a specific number of years. All right, so um, I now have to add uh, to my toolbox not a hammer and a screwdriver, which I don't have at the ready, but a, a hammer for now. <laughs> well, we don't have to rename this as the screwdriver, so you can stick <laughs> with the hammer. <laughs> All right, so uh, Jeffrey, you want to tell our, our listeners how they can ask more questions? Absolutely. Thank you so much for this question. And if you'd like us to answer a question on your mind, go ahead and email us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to seeing your questions in our inbox each day.